Hey gang, before we move on to the next chapter, I thought I'd do one more problem from uh, normal stress, sigma stress, but that is with a distributed load. We haven't done a distributed load problem yet, so let's do one of those and see what's going on. So for this problem, right, we're used to distributed loads from like statics looking like, looking like this maybe, right? Well, why would you have a load that is along the beam? Well, think about if you had a beam, I have a beam, it's just my little thing here, right? This thing has weight. And so if I measure a point right here, right? If I'm this point right here, I only have this much weight acting on me. If I go this point right here, it's a little farther up, now I have a little more weight that's trying to stretch me, right? If I look at a point right here, I have even more weight trying to stretch me, right? So as I go along here, I've got distributed load, this per unit length weight um, that's being added to the beam. And it's the same this way, if I do it this way, and I say there's a load, a distributed load pulling that way along the beam, it makes a little more sense when you think about it with gravity, but it could be like this. Uh, they want us to write an equation for normal stress, sigma stress, that's P over A stress, right? Uh, as a function of X, what is X? X is just a distance, okay, from here over to here. Um, from 0.5, which is this point here, to 1.25, which is this point out here. Now here's a question for you, okay? If you're if you're out here somewhere, what, what is the six kilonewtons? What is the six kilonewtons acting on? Okay, imagine this beam is a big rubber band, right? If I grab that rubber band right in the middle, right here at six, right, and I stretch it with six kilonewtons, then what is that six kilonewtons doing to this side of the rubber band? Nothing. It's just along for the ride, right? So the six here only affects this portion of the beam. Whereas the three, right, if I add the three to my rubber band, I've got a weight in the middle. When I add that one, the whole thing stretches. So this guy is going to affect this part of the beam and that part of the beam. Does that make sense? So the six actually doesn't affect this part of the beam at all. Okay? So how do we do this problem? So they want from, from 0.5 to 0.75. In other words, anywhere in this range here... Um, give me an equation, sigma n equals something, right, for that part of the beam, okay? Well, let's look at it at a distance of x. Where is x? x is just any point, right? We're just going to pick a place, wham, right there. And you can remember this back from uh, statics world, right? What do we do when we cut a beam? You know, you have to draw a free body diagram of that side of the beam. Let's draw a free body diagram of that side of the beam look like this and where we cut that beam you must have a M and V right so you'd have um, there's the V there's N oh that's gonna be going up isn't it on this side according to the positive sign convention that we all know and love right so there's our beam now let's put the loads on here with my red pen I've got a three over here And I've got these distributed loads here, okay? All right. So we need to know a couple of things here. Number one, uh, how long is this beam? How long is that? It's X. No, it's not X, right? X is from the start to there. Well, the whole beam is 125, 1.25 meters. So how far is just, uh, just that, that distance there? The whole thing minus X, right? So this length here is 1.25 meters minus X, okay? So how do we find N? Well, that's not too bad, is it? It's just, uh, oh, I don't know, sum of the force in the X, right? Sum of the forces in the X equals three kilonewtons 
minus n, and then also the, the distributed load. So plus, what is the distributed load? Well, it's, it's 8 kilonewton per meter times how many meters? Times that many meters, right? So uh, 1.25 meters minus x. We'll just say 1.25 times x. We know that's meters. Times 8 kilonewtons per meter, okay? So if this whole thing is in meters, and I multiply that times that, then that and that cancel out. So that's in kilonewtons, that's in kilonewtons. So when I solve for n, it's going to be in kilonewtons, right? So move the n to the other side. n is equal to 3 plus uh, 8 times 1.25. A quarter of 8 is 2, so that's 10, uh, minus... 8x, and that whole thing is kilonewtons, right? And so, uh, let's see, 3 plus 10 is 13n is equal to 13 um, minus 8x kilonewtons, okay? Cool? So far, so good. Now, they want an equation for sigma n. We know, well, we know that, don't we? It's right there, okay? So we're going to use that equation. Now, do we know the area? We know n. There's n right there. Bam! What is a? Uh, well, that's pretty easy, too. They tell us that this phi, that's the international symbol for diameter, okay, is 100 millimeters. And so a is equal to pi times 50 squared. How much is that? I don't know. Here we go. Pi, pi, times 50. <gasps> you know what? Ooh, I don't, let's, let's make sure. Oh, yeah, that's okay. Millimeters is good. 50 squared. That's good. And that is 7,000. A is equal to 7,853.98 3 millimeters squared. I like that. I'm just going to leave it in millimeters, right? Some of you might be like, oh, I would change it to meters. Uh, I'm going to change this one instead to newtons. That way I've got newtons over millimeters squared, which is megapascals. Way to go. You remembered. Okay, here we go. So let's see here. Let's get rid of that guy. Get rid of that. Okay, so here we go. Sigma n is equal to n, which I'm going to change from kilonewtons to newtons. So I'm going to multiply that whole thing by a thousand. So 13,000 minus 8,000 x divided by the area 7,853.98 millimeters squared. This top is in newtons. So that's going to give me megapascals, isn't it? So 13,000 divided by 7,853 minus 8,000 divided by 8,000 divided by, oh, let's just do that. Wait a minute. Let's just do that. 13,000 divided by 7853.98, 7853.98 equals 1.66. So this is going to equal 1.66 minus uh, 8,000 divided by 7853.98, 1 1.02. Uh, and that is going to be what? Sigma n is equal to 1.66 minus 1.02x megapascals. So there is your equation for that normal stress anywhere from here to there. That equation is valid from there to the end of the beam. So you tell me a distance x, right? You tell me a distance x. And I'll tell you what the stress in the beam at that particular point is, the normal stress, right? You give me x, 
and I'll tell you the rest. So, that's not too scary, is it? All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about, we're gonna move on to some strain problems. Try not to strain yourself over there or get too stressed out over it. <laughs> See you next time.